Hi everyone, welcome to a home improvement edition of our design and make series from CNC Router Parts. In this video we are going to test drive Vetrix 8.5 release and use a new molding tool path operation to recreate baseboard trim to match some existing trim. The first step is to capture this profile. Fortunately capturing two dimensional shapes is pretty straightforward. In my case I'll use a scanner and import that image into vCarve Pro. At this point we have two options. We can use the trace bitmap function to automatically extract the two dimensional profile. Or better yet, I can produce an even cleaner result by manually tracing. As I manually trace, my goal here is to accomplish the shape while using the minimum amount of points possible. My reasoning is that if I can minimize the number of data points, I'll be able to produce a more efficient program with less likelihood of unintended artifacts in the finished part. With the profile complete, it's time for a reality check. I'll check the height dimension against the measured value of the reference part. That's really, really close. And I'll rotate this profile by 90 degrees to make it parallel with where I plan to put the rail path. The length of the rail will determine the length of the sweep and my part. In my case, I want a six inch piece of molding, so I'll make this six inches long. And I'll center that. Strictly speaking, this should be enough geometry, but I'm going to close the profile. And I'll move my rail line up to make room for the sweep. Okay, so here we are. We have a rail and we have a two dimensional profile. And we're ready to create the molding tool path. Glancing at the clock, we're just passing two minutes into this video and we're ready to create the tool path for a three dimensional molding part. This is pretty cool, and frankly another example of the simplicity and purpose-driven user experience that sets Vetrix software apart, and why we recommend it to so many of our customers. Okay, enough fanboy, let's create molding toolpath. Okay, see that new button to the right that looks like a piece of trim? Let's click on that and select our rail and our profile. Next I'll set my feeds and speeds for this program. I'm using a quarter inch ball nose tool and I'll set the spindle speed to 18,000 RPM and leave the feed rate at 200 IPM, giving me a conservative chip load of 0 .005. Let's break out of our workflow for a little bit and talk about how this rail works. The arrows indicate sweep direction along the rail and the lines represent which side of the rail the profile will be created. In our case, we want them to be under the rail. The green squares represent where the profile and the rail will be anchored and oriented from. By selecting reverse rail on either of them, we can reverse these relationships. If you're interested in learning more about the mechanics of this powerful toolpath command, I recommend you check out Vetrix Molding Toolpath in-depth video. Getting back to our workflow, I'll calculate the toolpath and preview it. Looks like the part we want. Hovering over the toolpath, I can see a summary. Looks like we'll have an 8 minute runtime. I have the surface contours, now I need to cut out the part. So to do this I'm going to draw a new box. And I'll start in the corner here, and I'm going to make X 6 inches, and Y I'm going to make the height of the baseboard. And then I'll move the bounding box, snap it. It's great how that just snaps into place. And make sure I'm doing a profile cut on the outside. And I'll switch to a flat end mill and calculate that. Oh, I didn't get all the way through. Go back. Yeah, change the cut depth to 6.6. Six. And there we are. I'll be taping the part so no tabs are required. And I can save my G code out to my CNC computer. Save and start the program.
I'm impressed. The part on the right is what just came off the machine and it's identical to the part that we modeled it from. In this video we used the Benchtop Standard CNC Machine available at cncrouterparts.com. Thanks for watching.